In today's video, I embark on a quest to determine which is the strongest of all Oonga Boongas, the most bombastic of big bonks. There's a natural, almost primal satisfaction in wielding a heavy object and unleashing chaos upon a target, and that is why strength will always hold a special place in our caveman hearts. Even the magic nerds can appreciate the joy of a good old wooden club to the face. Alrighty, and now let the club wielding, big bonking, bone crushing journey commence. I know that every single one of you at some point has indulged in the ancient and forbidden art known as the R1 light spam. Well, one of the greatest weapons to light spam with is the Stone Club. Wielding this weapon, you unleash a symphony of bonks, a relentless button mashing fury. It has A scaling in strength. Use Crag Blade and give birth to a fourth dimensional stone club. Or you can use the Barbaric Roar weapon art, creating the Barbaric Bonk. Swing fast and hit hard. Leave your enemies contemplating their life choices after hitting them with this. A unique attribute that makes the Stone Club so good is its robust hyper armor. This Oonga Boonga train is plowing through attacks, like a, like a fat dude gaining momentum down a water slide. It's a goddamn force of nature. There's, there's nothing stopping that. Now this ranking may be a bit biased, but in my opinion, the Malekith Black Blade is just too damn Chad-like. This thing looks like a demon blacksmith crafted it with interdimensional material, specifically for the Grim Reaper himself to wield. In short, it's bad fucking ass, man. Any weapon or spell harnessing the power of Black Blade is immediately top tier. A total boss annihilator. As the Black Blade chops off that 10% of health right from the jump. This great sword is split, physical and holy damage, and despite the holy component scaling with faith, a predominantly strength build can still wield this weapon quite effectively. When you hear strength weapon, you probably think, big ass bonk boy, I'm bonking on big boy. Well think again my fishy little friend, because here we have the almighty spiky fishy fist weapon. AKA the Star Fist. Crag Blade plus heavy charged attacks equals cheeks clapped. You can punch the bullshit straight out of annoying bosses like Radagon and the Elden Beast. These are powerful in PvP as well. The dreaded running attack spam is at its peak when wielding the Star Fist. So these are clearly the top dogs of the fist weapon world, boasting the highest attack power, plus the advantage of innate blood loss. You can double up on that bleed by enhancing with blood flame, because nothing says, I'm about to beat your ass boy, like setting your fist on fire. You can go light and fast, like a nimble ninja, or go hard and heavy, like a damn wrecking ball. Moving forward, most people think dexterity when you imagine fast hitting bleed builds, like dual scavengers curved swords, but the truth is, you can actually make a mean bloody strength build using the beast man's curved sword. Going strength and arcane using beast man's versus dexterity and arcane using scavengers, the beast man's swords come out on top with a higher attack power yet similar blood loss. You can farm two in one playthrough, so dual wielding is easy. They got the jump shots on lock, baby, taking full advantage of successive attack buffs like winged insignia. And that negative stigma around using blood loss is counteracted by the chadness from using strength. So feel free to bleed your way to victory while still retaining a little dignity. Oh, that's bars. The Great Star's Hammer has a couple unique attributes that make it special. It comes with innate bleed and it has a self-healing effect, healing you on every hit. You can create a plethora of all types of powerful builds using this hammer, but there's one setup in particular that's absolutely bedonkulous. Using the Prelate's Charge Ash of War, you can take your enemy on a wild train ride. All the successive hits from the weapon art allows you to capitalize on the self-healing effect. Then you can increase the healing even more when combined with the scrumptious Godskin Swaddling Cloth. This talisman also heals you on successive hits, making you become damn near invincible.
you can toss on blood flame increasing the blood loss and fire damage so you got strong self healing your proc and bleed and dealing heavy fire damage the synergy is off the charts man it just goes to show how much build crafting potential the great stars weapon has oh my god look at that dude that's all the blood holy shit <laughs> look at that face man that's disturbing speaking of my face am i smiling right now no clearly i am frowning and i'm frowning because you are not subscribed yeah you but if you subscribe right now i will shake my booty in the next video yeah i will i will shake it do it if you combine a pump shotgun, a 50 caliber sniper, and a V8 engine, then you give it to fucking Tarzan, you will create the Silurius Tree. Scales with faith, but it's mainly a strength weapon. So if get good and learn the dodge patterns are not in your vocabulary, then use this weapon art because you can run through the entire game just blasting away from a safe distance. It even goes further than the Blasphemous Blades weapon art. It is chargeable and deals holy damage. So Godfrey's Icon, Sacred Scorpion, Shard of Alexander, you must fine tune and optimize your build to expose the true power that hides within this undead zombie tree yeah man the fashion is ferocious the buck that grew these horns must have been the giga chad of the forest the Marais Executioner Sword is an absolute gold mine for optimization and stacking buffs. This weapon art drills a hole straight through the enemy's soul. It's affected by successive attack buffs like Winged Insignia and Thorny Crack Tear. Plus Godfrey's Icon because it is chargeable. It also deals magic damage so you can use magic type buffs like the Magic Shrouded Crack Tear. There's just so many ways to make this weapon powerful. Enemies will either get staggered into oblivion, or guard broke, sit down bitch, fuck you, or just die from straight damage. Before we move into our top 3, we have the traditional honorable mention. Even though it doesn't actually scale with your strength level, it's still only used on strength builds due to its requirements. The One-Eyed Shield. The typical strategy for a strength user is getting up close and personal and manhandling your enemy. Well, this shield helps diversify your range of attacks. You now have a giant cannon blasting your enemies off their feet. You take the jar cannon, combine it with a great shield, and give birth to this beautiful monstrosity. We are now entering the top three strength weapons. Here we have not only one of the best strength weapons, but one of the best weapons overall, the Great Sword. With the Lion's Claw weapon art, this stands as the true iconic powerhouse big bonk attack, asserting its dominance as a big daddy. A significant reason for its high ranking is how versatile the Great Sword is. It can serve a much greater purpose than solely I go bonk. It adapts really well to various playstyles, be it a pure strength build, blood infusion, or frost enhancement with ashes of war like giant hunt lion's claw and barbaric war i mean you got options here bloody great sword is actual easy mode in my opinion this is the arnold schwarzenegger of swords the big beefy bleed plus bonk equals <laughs> He's freaking dead. Number 2. The weapon with the highest attack power in the game officially goes to the Occult Giant Crusher. Miyazaki said, you guys like Big Bunk? Well I'll show you Big Bunk. Unga Bahunga Big Bunk. It was very difficult to rank this over the Great Sword, especially since personally I prefer the Great Sword, but objectively the bombastic giant crusher is just too powerful. Now this weapon is like the old Arnold because he is still a beast, though that power comes with caveats. Firstly, it's 26 pounds. That's fat as hell. And secondly, achieving that super high attack power requires you to invest heavily into both strength and arcane. I'm talking like at least level 50 to 60 in both. But hey, if you got the levels to spare, this hammer can be the mightiest of them all. Equipped with a we have lion's claw at home for its heavy attack This opens up the opportunity to use other ashes of war like crag blade or royal knights resolve For even more attack power while still performing this unique move 
which gives you hyper armor, similar to how the lion's claw would. So this unique heavy is actually a huge benefit. But yo, if you're power stancing giant crushers, you either have one of the smallest minuscule weenies in the world and you're compensating for it, or you got the fucking biggest and you're flaunting its colossal size. But there's no, there's no middle ground here. It's one or the other. In first place, the claw mark seal. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. The real first place, the Knight Rider Glaive. But I'm not gonna lie, it's my personal bias that pushed it into first place. Because goddamn, I love this naughty boy. A very long reach with an S tier strength scaling. The Knight Rider works masterfully with multiple weapon arts. Phantom Slice, Giant Hunt, Stormcaller, and the best of them all, Flaming Strike. This is the greatest weapon to use Flaming Strike on. Literally melt through boss fights and then hop into PvP and start spanking their cheekies because the Knight Rider Glaive can dominate anywhere. If the Greatsword is young Arnold, the Giant Crusher is Arnold, then the Knight Rider Glaive is John motherfucking Cena. <laughs> Please drop a like on the video if you made it this far. You are a real jabroni. And subscribe to the channel for more awesome gaming content. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for watching, my friend. I'm